the, the, the biggest question to me, what is it, what is it all about, why is it possible, how can it be? The blending of those two worlds, not profound in a deep spiritual way, but th th there's a definite link between the two. Just do what I call circular breathing, which is in, into your belly, into your chest, opening up your chest, and you're just, just breathing in and out. Your mind might go to a tight spot in your body, you know, your, your toe might itch, there might be a hot spot on your forearm. You just cast your mind around all those different places, start to connect with the inner world, let, let go of all the senses, let go of everything external, and start to find your way in. Which is what, what I call angel breath. It's an incredibly delicate, gentle little, little breathing in and out. And at that point, you've probably just dropped into a light trance or a light sleep state. If you're wired up in the lab, you'd be in light sleep. And it's, it's an interesting spot. It's, um, it's quiet because your hearing is the first thing that goes. What you notice is the absence of noise, so it's a big silent space, but it has a presence. It's not like the noise is gone, it's like you're in a space where the silence has a life of its own. And you're just starting to search around for anything of interest in your, in your visual field. It's beginning to take you into the dream space. If this was a dream, I wouldn't know that I was dreaming now. Sometimes it's crisp and clear and you're just there, you're walking, walking down a street. You know you're dreaming because the, it, it, it's, it's hyper real, it's very real, but there's something completely out of place. It, it's a place to work problems out, it's, it, it's a place of relaxation, it's a place of creativity. I'd like to see children drawing their dreams in a very simple way. You'll teach a generation that that dream space is valuable, it's real. I'll have an inkling that the last thing I did was come home from work or went out for a bike ride. I can't be in Europe. So I quietly walk over to a building and I'll put my hand on the stones, the foundation stones, and I'll gently rub them. And it's crazy, I'm a little bit embarrassed in the dream. I don't want anyone to know that I'm checking to see if I am dreaming. So I'll gently rub my hands on that stone. Um, sometimes my fingers will go into it, other times it won't. I'll push a little bit. It's quite often it has a spongy feel. Every surface in the, in, in the dream is different. Gla glass gives like plastic. It's like a balloon that expands and contracts. Stone, you can put your hands onto that and then you can gently push your hands into it. You'll get a slight tingling in your fingertip. Other materials are, are, are different. As we get older and older, we get more buried in bills and work pressures and life pressures, and we start to lose that connection, that ability to dream or recall. It can be anything you want it to be, and you can be scared of it, you can have control of it, that's up to you. It's so incredibly real, you just, you know, even after 40 or 50 years of it, you look around stunned at the reality of it, just disbelieving. But then you get over that fast and you go exploring, just go have some fun in the dream space. Vividness, the content, the abst abstractness of them more so has probably stopped me using drugs. I thought, I thought that the drug experience I'd heard people talk about weren't comparable, so why would I bother? I was happy in my own mind. But between the two of them, you know, that opens up a lot of possibilities. I call it creative thinking. Um, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a point where the abstract thinking of the dreams place bleed through into business, bleed through into daily life, gives you insights and just makes you more rounded person. So for me, that they're not separate worlds, you know, that they, they both exist at the, at the one time. It's given me uh, absolute belief in myself, you know, um, if I want to do something, I will do it, you know, and if I want something, I will get it. You know, okay, it's not an arrogant, it's going to happen for me, it's I'm going to make it happen.
get this deep inherent belief in yourself and you just get on with life and you enjoy it. Um, actually, I lost the three-door here. <laughs>